So I've been using a custom keyboard build for quite a while now, big fan of it. Uh, so much in fact that I just haven't bothered building anything else out there and trying all of the different variants and different brands. Now, as a reviewer, that's kind of a bad thing because when people ask me whether this keyboard's good or whether that one's good, I honestly just don't know because I haven't really built them. So in an attempt to change this, I'm gonna be building some more keyboards soon. And one which I recently built, I wanna share with you guys today. So this is the Novel Keys NK65 Entry Edition. It's a polycarbonate hot swap 65% keyboard. And I think it's an excellent starting point for those wanting a great sounding board without spending too much. $95 here gets you the base keyboard, which basically means everything except for the switches and the keycaps. And surprisingly, at the time of filming, they have every single color option in stock. Now, personally, I do prefer the more neutral options like frost or smoke, which are semi-transparent, and they will allow the RGB lighting to shine through. The color options though, they're pretty sick, nice and tasteful. And there you can get a little bit more flair in your setup. So quick little unboxing here. You get a nice carrying case, which is surprisingly sturdy. You get the NK65 itself, which is a bit heavier than you'd expect for a polycarbonate board. And you also get a coiled USB-C cable. Although I will note the coil is pretty long and the cable itself is kind of short. So you might need to pick up a USB extension. But from here, all you have to do is insert your switches of choice, pop on whatever keycaps you prefer, and you're up and running. Now, when I picked up my NK65, they only had the yellow version in stock, which, as as you can see is just very bright, very saturated, and just not the color that I had in mind for the keycaps that I wanted to use. Then I thought, you know, a lot of people probably run into this same issue. You have this color that you kind of have in mind for your own build, but it just might not happen to be in stock or maybe it doesn't even exist. And that got me thinking just how hard would it be to paint it? So that's what I did. In the end, I went with a nice soft cream color and it's a pretty close match to the Novel Keys cream switches. The NK65 Entry Edition uses a a polycarbonate case so it's pretty easy to paint if by any chance you want to do the same thing and the specific spray paint that I used was Montana Gold's shock white cream. Now this stuff sprays on pretty rough so I then used a gloss clear coat for the top and bottom shell just to act as a protective layer and it also gives the paint a bit more of a premium gloss finish. In the end pretty happy with the result uh, the only downside is that I'm stuck with the yellow EVA foam that can't really be painted but you don't really see that in the build anyway so not really a big deal. The final finish as well, not perfect, definitely rushed on a couple of spots and I don't think it ever would be perfect since it's a pretty DIY approach. There are a few spots and imperfections here and there so just keep that in mind if you're planning on doing the same thing. As for the switches that I went for, you've probably guessed it by now but we're going with the Novel Keys Creams. Very popular linear switch which I'd say is medium in terms of heaviness, 70 gram bottoming out force and 55 gram actuation at 2 millimeters of keystroke travel. In my opinion, a very comfortable switch when it comes to gaming, just slightly heavier than a Cherry MX Red, which is what most people use. They feel reasonably good and smooth out of the box. The housing is made of a low friction POM plastic. Lubing them is optional, but it can improve the sound and feel even further, particularly just dampening down the spring and giving the switch that proper lubricated feel. For reference, here are all of the areas of the switch that I applied a light coat of Crytox 205G0. If you want a more in-depth guide to switch lubing, then I'll leave something a little bit more detailed detailed down below. But yeah, nothing too crazy here. Pretty typical approach to linear switch lubing. And for the first time ever, I also tried using switch films to give the housing a bit more stability, but in the end, I just removed them. I found that when I actually installed the switches onto the board, the keystroke pressure became a lot firmer and more inconsistent. The result was that the nice linear cream switches felt more like 100 gram tactile switches for some reason, and removing the switch films made them feel normal again. So not really worth the hassle here for cream switches at least. Uh, I might try them again in the future, but in my opinion, the cream switches feel pretty solid without them in the first place. Now the keycaps that I'm using for this build and one that kind of inspired the build in the first place are the Cool Kids set from Enjoy PBT and BIP. Really fun looking set, which is also in stock at the time of filming, although it is a bit more expensive when we're talking about keycaps. And especially if you're going with the NK65 entry edition for budget reasons, there are definitely cheaper alternatives out there which could bring down the cost of the total build. And then to round things out, I just picked up a cream colored cable from KBD fans, which seems to match well enough. And so that brings the total cost of the build to about $280 US. Again, the keycaps and the switches here are a bit more on the expensive side. You can also just use the provided cable or something a lot cheaper. And in the end, realistically, you could price up a budget NK65 build for as little as 150 bucks. Now, as a bit of 
of comparison to what I'm currently using, which is the Tofu 60% from KBD Fans. Been using this for quite a while now. It's full metal and it's $100 more expensive. And these two keyboards sound completely different. On one hand, we have a full metal keyboard, you know, aluminum shell, brass plate. This is a very stiff and sharp, almost metallic sounding keyboard. The NK65 on the other hand, polycarbonate shell, polycarbonate plate. The foam on the inside is also a lot denser and so there you get more of a low pitch kind of thocky kind of rumble. Now I think now I finally realize why some people actually prefer polycarbonate boards over metal, or at least going with a polycarbonate plate. This is the first keyboard that I've built to really have that kind of soft impact sound. I do also feel that the dense foam that's included with the NK65 is to thank for that as well. Now the stabilizers that come with the NK65 are actually pretty good. Out of the box, they're okay. They're plate mounted, they don't need to be clipped, and they come with a decent amount of lube where the wire clips in. It's okay for an out of the box experience. After applying a bit more lube around the stems and also inside the housing where the wire sits, pretty much all of that rattle and ticking goes away. And honestly, that really, really surprised me because in my experience, stabilizers have been the most frustrating part of any custom keyboard build. They all sound different. They all take different kind of steps to mod and tune. No kind of stabilizers sound the same, at least in my experience, uh, modding stabilizers. But here, the fact that you can just put a little bit of lube in the right places and get these sounding good, you don't even need to remove them from the plate and they all sound very consistent and very solid. So there it is, my first build with the NK65 entry edition and pretty happy with the result. The form factor as well is right on the money, nice and compact, 65%, still get your arrow keys, but just missing the numpad and function row. The only downside for some might be the narrow right alt, right control and function key, but that's something that's pretty easy to get used to. Also, I would have preferred if the USB port was on the left side, not the right side but that's a small detail. With the typical NK65 build sitting around the $200 mark or so, it's definitely worth the money. It's a very premium typing experience that despite being custom is really quick and easy to get up and running. Throw in some lube switches, add some extra lube to the stabilizers, then throw in your keycaps and you've got a really nice build for relatively not that much money or time. So if you're just getting started with custom keyboards, I think it's a great option. I also think it's pretty good if you want a really premium polycarbonate uh, type experience and I will leave links down below. As always a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.